This will take place over the next week. Today we have Nia Coffey, Amanda Zowie B, and Lauren Cox. Uh, we'll get started right away with Nia. And first question will go to Rashawn Haylock with Spectrum Sportsnet. Hey, Nia. Good morning. Good morning. Um, have you had time to reflect a little bit just on, you know, what this season meant for you individually and what you were able to showcase, you know, throughout the league? And if so, what sticks out to you? Um, just maybe just a little. It's kind of been hectic getting back, but um, I am just, just proud of kind of where I've started to where I am now. Um, I just wanted to make sure that like I could have been the best teammate and player I could be for this program. And I feel like I did the best I could for the season, um, especially with a lot of things that the team was going through. So um, overall, I would say um, I am feel pretty good about it. How rewarding is that considering your journey? Yeah, just to see the improvements and to see that I'm moving in the right direction, that definitely uh, makes me feel good. It just makes me want to work hard and continue to move forward because um, I know how hard it can be in the league. So just, you know, proud that I was, you know, didn't give up because, you know, that definitely, you know, could have happened. But I'm just really appreciative for the opportunity that the Sparks has given me this season. We'll go to Tukni Nguyen with the LA Times. Hi, Nia. When you, you mentioned you're proud that you didn't give up because that could have happened. Is there a moment in time that you kind of think of like as the closest you were to giving up on this particular dream of taking a spot in the WNBA? Um, yeah, I would say, honestly, after the bubble season, that was just really hard for so many different reasons. But, you know, I just felt like I just wasn't you know, where I wanted to be. And I just was kind of more focusing on the negatives instead of, you know, focusing on what it could be. So I'm really thankful that I had the right people around me and the right opportunities um, to just, you know, help me to realize that it's a journey. It's not a sprint, it's a marathon. So just, you know, stay the course. Mm -hmm. And do you, you came, you signed with the Sparks on that non-guaranteed contract and you come in and you really become a critical player for what they did this year. So do you feel like you proved something about where you belong in this league, about staking out your spot as one of the 144 in this in this league? I mean, this league is changing so much, but honestly, the biggest thing that was important to me was just showing that to myself that, you know, I could do it. Um, you know, hard work does pay off and just continue to work towards my goals. And whether if that's seen or not, as long as I figured that out, that was all that mattered to me. Mm -hmm. And on a team standpoint, how are you kind of processing the end of this season with the Sparks? Just obviously you guys had so many tough things happen to you, but to be in that playoff hunt really to literally the last second of the season, how are you processing this whole season? How it went for you guys? There's so many emotions to it, but I'm just really proud, even with everything that happened to the season, which was a lot. Um, we were still in it. We were still there. We were still fighting. We were still hopeful. And, you know, that's really good to see, especially when things can really bring you down. We were staying focused and we all had that goal in mind and we were still fighting. So that just shows, you know, the heart in it on this team. So that really made me proud. But I mean, I just can see the future for this team and it's 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 going to be good. So I'm excited for the future. We'll go to Chris Camello with Nightcast Media. Uh, Nia, uh, first of all, tremendous season, in my opinion. I, th I thought you played really well. And uh, as a f impending free agent, what do you think you showed the league? You know, because I, I, uh, with teams potentially looking at you to add them to their roster, like Tukmi is asking. Um, well, people always talked about my potential, my versatility when it um, came to like what I could bring to a team and been on five different teams. So I guess it works for different teams. So um, just showing that I can be versatile and that I'm hardworking and that um, I've been improving my skill because I came into the league pretty raw, but I'm really serious and I'm focused on it. So, um, mm -hmm. David Yapkowitz with Next Hoops.
Hey, Nia. Um, I remember uh, when you first signed with the team, you mentioned how um, your familiarity with Coach Trammell from your time in San Antonio kind of played a little bit of a, a factor in you signing here. Um, throughout this season, you know, you became one of the team's more impactful defend defenders. And at one point, you know, um, in terms of your shot blocking, um, you know, you were really an anchor in there. Um, I'm just a little curious as to, you know, spending another season with her here, you know, as an assistant coach and, and her um, attention to defense, just how, how had, how has she um, impacted you in, in, on that end of the floor um, and strides you made defensively this season? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So we were both rookies when I came into the league. So it was amazing just to be with her another season and then she def we spent a lot of time um, in film just showing me what I can do better defensively and just working on it every day in practice. And I always asked her, you know, to hold me accountable if there's anything more that I need to do or learn to help best the team defensively. Um, she would always let me know. So I really appreciate her insight in it. And it shows of what we were able to do this season. We'll do two more questions for Nia. We'll go to Kahari Jones, Jr. with the LA Sentinel. Hey, what's going on, Nia? Uh, you, you mentioned that you, you're excited for the future. Um, you know, what, what, what things this season um, helped you, you know, grow throughout the season and makes you excited for the future? Um, well, I was in a new position. I've never even played that much, to be honest. Um, so just to be in a role where um, I was playing more and on offense and defensive ends, like I – played a role there it just really expanded my experience and that I mean that helps you play and just learn and grow more so um just it just opened my eyes to see like how much more there is to do for me to continue to get better on both ends so I'm just really excited to you know be able to put in that work last question for Neil we'll go to Sabrina Merchant with SB Nation and yeah, just sort of building off of that, uh, what do you think it was about the Sparks in particular in this organization that helped bring out the best in you this year? Well, my teammates were actually, were absolutely amazing. And then Coach Fisher, I've never had a coach like him before. And it's, it's hard to explain, but I would just say he really just lets us to come into our own and, and like wants us to gel together as a team instead of just like pinpointing exactly what he wants everyone to do and this is what isn't allowed and stuff like that like it's it's difficult to play like that but it, I've kind of learned to play like that so then coming here it was a completely different structure and I can see what he's trying to do and it's absolutely amazing it takes time to adjusting just from playing in different systems for so long but it's helping me to grow and just see the game of basketball in a different light thanks thank you all right, thank you so much. We'll be back in about 10. All right, we'll get started. Uh, questions for Amanda Zowie B, who averaged a career high 9.2 points per game this season. We'll start with David Yapowitz with the next. Hey, Amanda. Um, uh -huh. You know, the times that you and Neko were on the court together, you know, I noticed that you guys had developed some real good chemistry together. Um, I mean, whether you're in the high post or she's in the high post, you know, you both look for each other down low. Um, just, you know, what was that like playing with a player of her caliber? And, you know, what what do you see in terms of, you know, that that kind of chemistry with each other developing further? Yeah, I mean, it's obviously it's great playing with Neko. Uh, she's one of the best in the world and one of the best to ever do it. Um, but yeah, we, we told each other that we were going to look for each other, um, whoever's high or low, um, just trying to build on that chemistry and, and we haven't played that many games together. Right. Uh, she was out, I was out in the beginning of the season. Uh, so I'm really looking forward to building a stronger connection, uh, with her in the future and next season. Um, yeah, it's just been super dope. Um. Uh, knowing that she is going to catch the balls that I throw um, and I'm going to try to do the same and just having someone, another post looking for you um, because we both can shoot from the outside. So they can't really sag off or be too close. We'll go over to Tukni Nguyen with the LA Times. Hey Amanda, you, you mentioned some of those injuries to you and NECA and obviously 
so many injuries kind of colored the whole season, but with some of the stuff that you guys had to go through as a team, how did that force you personally to grow as a player and a leader on this team? Um, yeah, I mean, we, I feel like everyone missed the game at some point. Um, and we had really bad luck with injuries, uh, for sure. Um, but I think Fish, uh, Coach Fish has said in the locker room at one point in the season, like, this is everyone's up, everyone who's healthy and playing. This is the opportunity for everyone to step up. This is what you dream about. This is what you want. So, um, you know, you just got to take that opportunity and live up to it and do the best that you can do. And after the season you guys had to even be in playoff contention, literally to the last shot, what, what about what you guys were able to do makes you encouraged about the future of this franchise? I mean, we, we were right there. We were about to be in the playoffs. Um, and then looking back and seeing how, you know, we missed Christy, Shanae, um, and Neka, a big chunk of the season. Um, it's going to be scary hours next season when everyone's back, uh, when everyone's healthy and, we gain some more chemistry and we can play off each other even more. Um, yeah, it's going to be so dope. Go to Rashawn Haylock with Spectrum Sportsnet. Hey, Amanda. Individually, uh, which ways do you feel like you grew the most this season? Um, probably my defense. That's something that Coach LT been harping on and really pushing me and believing in myself on the defensive side. Um, so that I think that's where I took my biggest strides. And you mentioned um, sort of the, the chemistry and everybody having to step up. Um, I mean, including yourself, right? I mean, how much pride do you take in the fact that, you know, there were some critical moments during this year in which you know, you were the one to step up. You were the one to knock down the big shot or to start a run or have a big block. Um, what, what sort of, I guess, solace do you take in that? I don't see it as like, I did that. The team did it. And we busted through this season together through the ups and the downs. Um, if someone hit a big shot, then that's because everyone else kept the defenders occupied. Right. Um, if I had a big block or knee had a big block, it's because the guards sent them right, right into us, knowing that we were, had their backs. Um, so for me personally, I don't think that it's like I did something in those big moments. I think that we did it as a team. Um, yeah. Awesome. Thank you. Congrats on the great, great season. We'll go to Sabrina Merchant with SB Nation. Hey Amanda, um, you know everyone credits Coach LT for how they've improved their defense, and I'm I'm just curious, what is it that she does that allows you to improve yourself on that end so much? I mean, she lives for it. <laughs> she lives for defense. Um, she brings so much passion and energy um, and love, but also like confidence in us, and I think that's why we are so successful. Um, I know I haven't always been confident uh, when it comes to my defense, but just hearing her every day, encouraging me and showing me clips of where I'm being great at, um, is really important. And I'm really grateful for that. Um, yeah, I guess she's like the defense guru. Has she given you any off season goals yet for um, how she wants you to come back improved again? Um, I haven't had my exit meeting with her just yet, but I'm sure she will be texting me after every game I have in Turkey. Thanks. Thank you. Thanks, Sabrina. I see one more hand for Amanda. We'll go to Kahari Jones Jr. with the LA Sentinel. Hey, what's going on, Amanda? Uh, you, you got so much love and passion for the game. Uh, you, you display it every every night. Um, you know, how did the, the Sparks allow you to just, just be yourself and you know, just continue to showcase your, your passion and love for the game. Yeah. I mean, I 
I know for a fact that when they signed me, they knew that I have a big personality on the court and I have a lot of energy. Um, so I knew I was going to be able to just be myself. Um, but, you know, it's also in practice, like all my teammates are goofy and they are loud and we all love the game of basketball. We are very grateful to be in this position. So it's just all about showing love for each other. Um, yeah, and then when you feel comfortable around the people that, that you spend every single day with, you just let loose and that's what happens. All right, thank you so much, everyone. See y'all next year. All right, thank you, media. Uh, last up for today, we have Lauren Cox. We'll start with Tukni Nguyen with the LA Times. Hi, Lauren. So obviously um, last year, your rookie year was quite unique in a lot of different ways. So this year being the first where you, you know, travel, you play in front of road fans. What did you learn about being in this league and kind of your second rookie year, if you will? Um, I, I've seen that players, individually, teams, uh, everyone goes through adversity at some point in the season. Um, I think we went through a lot of it, but um, I felt like we <laughs> kind of stuck together. We trusted each other and we stuck it out until the very end. What are your kind of personal goals for this off season? What are you kind of looking to accomplish? Um, I'm really looking forward to going overseas to Turkey. Um, I didn't go last year. Um, so just getting that overseas experience, um, improving in every aspect that I can, um, and just being able to come into training camp with being in game shape. Go to Sabrina Merchant with SB Nation. <clears throat> hey, Lauren, uh, congrats on your season. Uh, I'm just curious, uh, what do you think it was about the Sparks organization that was a good fit for you this year? Um, I, it all happened so quick. Um, it was kind of crazy when I signed and came out to LA, but, um, just felt good about it. I mean, the Sparks have a really good history. Um, coach Fisher is a great coach, was a great player. Um, you have players like the Agumake sisters, um, great leaders, you know, Christy Tolliver, who, um, didn't get to play as much like um, NECA and Cheney, but um, just being able to come into a team like that with such great leaders and such great experience, um, that was, it looked really good for me and I was excited about that. What were you able to take away from NECA and Cheney in the, the short time that you got to play with them? I think the biggest thing for me is just having them kind of always in my ear, just encouraging me, giving me little bits of advice, um, telling me things about certain players um, and how to defend them or what they want to do. Um, so that was just really big for me to just kind of have them always there recording. Uh, I just looked at that and saw recording, sorry. Um, encouraging me. <laughs> Thanks. Thanks, Sabrina. We'll go to Rashawn Haylock with Spectrum Sportsnet. Hey, Lauren. Hi. Um, how would you best describe your time here? Um, it's been a great experience for me. Um, I think anywhere that you go, every team is different. They're going to run different things. They're going to run their organization differently. Um, but coming in to LA, the team really welcomed me with open arms and uh, made me feel wanted and uh, just made me feel good coming into it. So I had a really great experience. Your numbers have been among the top forwards in the league uh, defensively, um, some of your some of your defensive numbers. Um, what pride do you take in that, and and what's it what's it feel like to be acknowledged among you know some of the best defenders you know in the front court? Well, I didn't even know that, so um, it feels pretty good. Um, in college, defense was kind of my thing, so I knew that 
coming into the league, I was going to kind of carry that over. And um, I knew that my offense would come eventually. But one thing that I'm always going to do is play as good a defense that I can. Thank you. Thanks, Rashawn. We'll go to Kahari Jones Jr. with the LA Sentinel. Hey, what's going on, Lauren? Um, you, you talked about just going up overseas. You know, uh, can, you, can you just elaborate on? Are you excited to go overseas, and uh, and what can you take from this season to that 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 will, that will help you? You know, uh, have a successful season overseas. Um, yeah, I'm really excited. Like I said, I didn't go last year, so this will be my first year overseas. Um, not really sure what to expect, but just excited to continue playing basketball in the off season. Um, I think it's really hard to stay in game shape without actually playing in games. Um, so I think that'll be a big difference for me coming into training camp next season. Thanks. Do we have any more hands? Sabrina, did you have one more? Yeah, just to go back to that, you know, staying in shape while playing games. Um, it, it didn't seem like you got much better as the season wore along. And I was wondering what you thought was your best source of like individual improvement by the end of the season. Um, I think I just got more comfortable and more confident. Um, I always say that my offense will come. Um, and like I said, one thing that I'm always gonna do is play defense. And I think as the season went along, um, I could tell, and I think other people could tell that I just got a lot more comfortable offensively. Right, and then it, I guess it makes sense to be here in LA where defense is absolutely the priority. Oh <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, of course. LT is, um, she loves her defense and I love that about her. She's a great coach. Thanks, Lauren. Uh, Rashawn, did you have one more? Hey, when you, look back on maybe some moments. Um, is there any particular moment that sticks out for you uh, this season since joining this team? I would just say my very first game with the team. Um, like I said, they welcomed me with open arms and I went into that game without going through a practice. I didn't even go to shoot around that morning. So I knew nothing about the offense, the defense, anything, but uh, everyone just, helped me out. They were talking to me during the game, during timeouts, when I was on the bench. Um, everyone was just helping me out. And that that was really important for me. And um, it just felt good to see that. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you guys so much. We'll send an email later today with tomorrow's schedule.